And now into the third day of competition in the 14th Pacific Games. New Caledonia is in the lead at the top of the medal table with 12 medals in total with 5 gold, 5 silver and 2 bronze. Fiji is in second with 5 medals and PNG in third with 4 medals. Communications with Team Niue has been difficult but the team made it to Nomea in good time joining in the open ceremony over the weekend. Sources say that Niue's Alovaka ladies fell short of medal contention in the V6 event, placing fourth. In the individuals event, Karen Misipaka paddled on behalf of Niue, coming third in the heats. However, she missed out on a spot in the finals. Niue's shooting team have also started their events yesterday and that will conclude tomorrow. We're hoping to get more updates and find out how Team Niue proceeds further on in the games. We hope to bring you more updates from Team Niue in our future news bulletin. Discussions to finalise Niue's disability policy is underway at the Millennium Hall this week as key stakeholders review and recap the need for the policy. The Pacific Island Forum Secretariat is supporting this initiative and Fred Miller says that the new disability policy for 2012 to 2015 will be a document that will incorporate and recognize the needs of people living with disabilities in the various sectors here in Niue. The policy also links to various international and regional agreements. So we're trying then to understand that and how these policies link to international and regional agreements and how it's linked to ministerial endorsement uh, uh, foreign ministers that look after disability and it's been sub how it's been supported uh, by the leaders of the forum leaders. So we're trying to link that up uh, so they understand that what they're doing is something worthwhile, something useful, something that's good and it's how, how it's linked to government and how government is supporting it. And uh, this morning the Premier gave it, uh, gave it his full support. And say it's, uh, it's need uh, it's recognition. So that's a discussion thus far, up right to after lunch, and after lunch they go into the groups where they discuss the current draft and try to see the how it uh, it will function here in the country, to see how it uh, uh, how how can they change it, how can they amend it if need be, how to make it uh, look more strategic. Uh, take away the technical language and try to use plain language, more understandable, and also the outcomes to be more realistic, more attainable, uh, and, and achievable. So you mentioned that the Premier is uh, willing that government will be committed to supporting this policy once it becomes an official document. Uh, what will it actually mean for, for government, especially when you talk about infrastructure, uh, it's going to be more than just the policy. What about the things within the policy and the capabilities of the government to address, fully address those issues? It's quite a difficult question for me to, to answer because uh, whatever the Premier says, uh, I cannot interpret uh, what he means by uh, I think the goodwill exists uh, within Cabinet, within government in New York. I think uh, they'll be able to support it, whatever they have. And uh, he's also uh, suggested that uh, we be realistic in what we, we're trying to put together. Uh, we have to make the doc document succinct, uh, to the point, clear, and uh, attainable, achievable. Uh, I, I think uh, when the, the Premier is talking about uh, uh, government will support it, meaning that we support whatever it can do in terms of uh, uh, the resources it has. Uh, but exactly what that means, I, I cannot. Only the Premier can. Can answer that for you. The support, however, from government will extend to what is within its means, also in recognition of international rights. One area that has also been discussed is access to education. Under the international rights, or the International Convention on, on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, Article 24 talks about education, education for all. UNESCO strategy talks about education for all. The Pacific Regional Strategy talks about education, inclusive education. The Biwako Millennium Framework talks about inclusive education. What do you think should be included for education for children with special needs in New York? They have to come up with it. They have to tell us and we put it down.
it doesn't come from me or come from uh, the partners working with me because uh, we need ownership of this. They need ownership. In the beginning, they said they're quite hard to be to establish a special policy for one or two children. But uh, one or two, it's not a matter of numbers, it's a matter of the issue that needs to be addressed. So they have recognized that now. They have now come up with the idea of, uh, of addressing this issue in terms of special education teachers, probably, uh, that new government should look into it. Uh, the curriculum for, for, for this, the assessment that we are going to put in, I think assessment is one of the big things that uh, is going to be added on now. They see this as a major part of trying to put together uh, what needs to be done for special needs children. Also present this week is the co-chairman for the Pacific Disability Forum, Rato Halato of Hakupu. The Pacific Disability Forum is a recognized regional NGO that works towards inclusive, barrier-free, socially just and gender equitable societies that recognize the human rights, citizenship, contribution and potential of people with disabilities in Pacific countries and territories. The PDF currently has a membership of 15 Pacific Island countries and Latoa Halato says that their NGO is hoping to establish a partnership with Niue by the end of the week. Day one of the Niue Tourism's International Wahoo Fishing Competition got off to a good start last Saturday, especially for those out on the canoes. 24 international fishermen arrived on last Friday's flight, especially for the tournament, as well as Jeff Thomas, who was also on the island with his camera crew, to capture the competition as part of his show. The conditions were favourable for the Vaca fishermen who returned with good catches. The anglers, however, had a delayed start and the only catch for the day was a yellowfin tuna weighing in at 14.6 kilograms. At the end of day one in the Vaca category, the biggest catch for the day was from Poitongia Kapanga snagging a 46.8 kilogram yellowfin tuna. Lonoanga Dawa was the only one to catch a wahoo at 15 kilograms. As for day two, which was yesterday, the Vaka fishermen were out on the water. Once again, the conditions did not favour those out on the boats as organisers had to make the call to postpone day two due to weather conditions. So the 24 visiting fishermen spent yesterday exploring the island. However, today the weather and catches were much better, but when this bulletin was being prepared, Prize giving for the day's efforts were being held and results were unavailable. The four day competition is expected to conclude tomorrow. Women's Kilikiki teams were out on the field last Saturday in what was an interesting display and revival of the sport. The ladies surprised many with the level of interest as villages were divided into zones based on the assumption that the numbers just would not be there to field village teams. The four zones included Zone 1 from Alofi North to Namkulu, meeting their competition in Zone 4, Avaseli to Alofi South, in a battle of sorts playing in Hakupu. The east side is from Zone 2 from Higdavaki to La Kepa, challenge Zone 3 from Liku to Vaya in Liku. The face-off between Zone 1 and Zone 4 was so tight, the final outcome is still uncertain as both sides contest scores and rules which will hopefully be resolved at a meeting that is being held today. In the other matchup between Zone 2, they were up against fierce competition from Zone 3. Zone 3 was first up to bat while Zone 2 took to fielding and after 30 players out, mostly due to efforts from the bowlers, Zone 3 managed a total score of 178 with all players out. It was then time for Zone 2 to take on to the pitch and team captain Chief Palaitomia, the last one standing to chase the score. With 30 minutes left to go, Zone 2 conquered their rivals thanks to the efforts of their captain who also came away with the overall points scoring 34 runs taking away a win for her team. And when this bulletin went to air, the Kilikiki committee had their debriefing meeting to discuss issues and developments for women's cricket on the island. The Niwe Rugby Union's third sevens tournament is in doubt due to a lack of teams registered for the tournament that is due to be held this coming weekend. 
So far, only three teams have registered, prompting an extension for team registrations. It is still unclear whether there is a lack of interest, a shortage of players, timing of the tournament or other issues that have teams reluctant to enter. The soccer season is still ongoing and there are athletes presently competing in competitions such as the Pacific Games may also be factors. Registrations now close on Wednesday midday and will determine whether or not it would be worthwhile to proceed with the tournament. And that concludes our news bulletin for tonight. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.